spaces. Okay, so you, you remember this one is the first freedom space I introduced, and there's the constraint space. Okay, here's the then we did this freedom space, this disk, and there's its constraint space. We did this freedom space, its constraint space, and this freedom space, and this constraint space. We talked a lot about this one, right? This is all those last examples we did and everything, and the sub-constraint space we did from this. But there are sub-constraint spaces within these as well, and you can look all these ones up in my master's thesis, right? So, okay, so anyway, the point is we've done a bunch of examples, and we've generated and studied these four freedom and constraint space pairs, okay? But here's the thing. Um, this is all fine and good, and you can see this is kind of exciting. You can show freedom spaces for a mechanism, and you can show constraint spaces to show how they're designed. But the problem is, is there's infinite designs out there. I mean, I could, you know, th this was one I gave you to generate this one, this freedom constraint space up at the top here, right? But what if I gave you this one, you know, and stuck in these four sticks in random ways uh, that are not 90 degree angles? and told you to find its freedom constraint space. Well, you could. You could draw the blue lines, then you could draw all the red lines, intersect all those blue lines, then find all the blue lines, intersect all the red lines, and you find its complementary freedom constraint space. And vice versa, you could do this one, and maybe you go home and do this, you know? Draw the blue lines, then find all the red lines, intersect it, then find all the blue lines, intersect that. Blah, 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 you, you find the freedom constraint space of this. Well, but the problem is, is there's infinite ways you can stick a stick into a block, First of all, there's infinite block shapes, right? But there's infinite ways you can stick a stick into a block. Um, there's infinite locations you could stick it on the block. And then there's infinite orientations you could do it. And then there's infinite number of wires you could do. You could do one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, uh, wires and stick them in in different... Of course, if you get above six, they're going to be redundant, guaranteed. Um, all right, so, so, but still, there's, you know, you can do six different wires, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or six and you can stick them in at any location, in any shape stage, in any orientation. So you could do this for an eternity and find their complementary freedom and constraint space and then you know, you'd think, well, then I'll generate all infinite freedom and constraint spaces. Well, here's the coolest thing I've ever realized in my life, okay? Which is that even though there's an infinite number of examples that you'd think could generate an infinite number of freedom and constraint space, there's just a finite number of freedom and constraint spaces, okay? And it turns out they're all within this chart. And this chart or library is, is the library of fact. Okay? It's the Freedom and Constraint Topologies Library. It contains all freedom and constraint spaces for parallel systems. Okay? And that, that's the one little hitch. This is just true for parallel systems. But there's a, another one for serial and hybrid systems that, that you'll learn shortly here. But uh, anyway, this is the complete comprehensive fact library of all freedom and constraint spaces. Okay? So, I could, you know, give you infinite numbers of these examples, and if you go through the exercise of finding their freedom constraint spaces, they will all be in this chart. There's no other ones outside this chart, okay, for parallel systems. If I take any two bodies and stick any number of sticks in them randomly and tell you to find the freedom constraint space, it will be one of these pairs from this library, okay? And you can see they're organized in columns according to the number of degrees of freedom. So this, this, is the, this is the freedom and constraint space that achieves zero degrees of freedom. So if it's zero degrees of freedom, then the freedom space is just an empty box. It's white. Okay? And its constraint space is basically a filled-in blue box. Okay? It, may, may, it might be better to show these as cubes. They're three-dimensional cubes. It's just, it's just basically a space with infinite blue lines in it that are all independent. Right? Okay? Well, it turns out there's the, the one degree of freedom column just has three... Uh, freedom constraint space types, which, which makes sense, right? Because there's really only three ways you can get one degree of freedom. You can get a translation, which is this arrow. You can get a rotation, which is this red line. Or you can get a screw, which you know is, is, is it like a twist with a finite pitch, right? And remember, we, did, we talked about Chassel's theorem. We talked about, um, according to Chassel's theorem and screw theory, there's only three ways you can get uh, one degree of freedom. It's, it's either a rotation, translation, or screw. Or, or, or the better way to say it and from Chassel's theorem language is everything is a screw with a certain pitch. You know, pitch of infinity, pitch of zero, and pitch of anything else. Okay? So according to fact, there's only three degrees of freedom and therefore three constraint spaces. Okay? And, and remember, of course, uh, you can take six minus this number and it'll tell you how many non-redundant things are in the constraint space. Okay, so six minus one degree of freedom is five non-redundant constraints in here. Okay? 
well, you know, this is less obvious, but, but check this out. So by the way, you know, everything in this chart that's red is a rotation line, everything that's black arrow, it's a translation, everything that's green is a screw. Everything that's blue is a constraint line or a pure force wrench vector. So these constraint spaces only have the blue pure force stuff. They don't have the orange or black moments, um, orange wrenches or black moments, okay? Okay, so, so remember, here's the four freedom and constraint spaces. You know, we're, we're familiar with this top one. Remember, it had three degrees of freedom in it, two from each disk, but they share a red one, so it's three. And you can see it's in the 3DUF column. Now, I did lie to you a little bit. Um, I told you that this was all the permissible motions, but in reality, there's a bunch of screws, too, okay? Um, there is there's no translation, though, but there's a bunch of screws in this on, on, in weird shapes I'm going to teach you about later. It was just too confusing to tell the truth at that point, okay? But now you're ready to hear the full truth, which is, yes, all the permissible motion in this freedom space are these red uh, interlocking disks, but there's also a ton of other screws in there, okay? And so I've, I've drawn it slightly different here. But, and this constraint space is now oriented. You can see it's cocked a little bit in this picture. Um, but uh, this is kind of the more complete picture of that one. This one, though, you know, you can see here, it's, uh, it, you know, remember a disk only has two degrees of freedom in it, so we would expect it to go to the two degree of freedom column. There it is. There's the disk. There's the constraint space. Okay. Um, here's the uh, box. You know, you know, there's three things in a box. And so you can see it's right there. There's the box with this translation. Of course, it's oriented differently in the chart, but it doesn't matter as long as you know the shapes and understand how they lie on top of each other and their, the relative location orientation of the two shapes. That's what's important. Okay, so, but you can see there's that one in the 3 duf column. And then here, you know there's two things in here, so it would be in the 2 duf column, which is right there, and there's its constraint space, which, which, which you know, 6 minus 2 would be 4, non-redundant things, okay? So we were familiar with these four, one, two, three, four, but there's all of these, okay? Okay, so, so 21 different things, right? So 18 in these two columns, uh, right? Um, okay, uh, you know, plus six from those, plus, plus two, okay? Okay, so, um, right. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> so apparently it's too late at night. I can't add uh, 18 plus 12 plus 2. <laughs> Whatever that is, is how many freedom constraint space types there are. Okay. So so <laughs> so so. But anyway, there is nine within the 2 duf column, and there is nine within the 3 duf column, and then there is uh, three within the 4 duf column, and one within the 5 duf column. Okay, and so, um, and, and this one's kind of obvious, right, because, because if you just have a parallel system with two rigid stages and you, uh, you know, you put a, a single wire in there, uh, you know, to, to join them, which is the simplest possible flexure system there could ever be, is two stages joined by a single wire, then you already, six minus one is, is five DOF, so there's really only one way you can get five DOFs with a single wire, right? Okay. And so, so anyway, you can see the symmetry here in this, in this chart. There's only one type with zero DOF, and there's only one type with five DOF. There's three types with one DOF, and three types with four DOF. And then there's nine types with three DOF, and nine types with two DOF, okay? <laughs> I'm still laughing that I can't add that together right now. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, that is, that is the fact chart, okay? And you can see this is complete with all the twists and screws and, and uh, rotations and translations. Okay. Um, and so, all, so basically the, the amazing thing is, is everything I've taught you is contained in this chart, okay? So pretend you have a horrible, pretend you can't visualize degrees of freedom. Don't worry about it. Pretend you can't do rule of complement pattern. Don't worry about it. Pretend you can't, uh, you know, you didn't understand any of the math. Don't worry about it. Pretend you don't even know Max, James Quirk's Maxwell's equation. Doesn't matter. It's all, every solution is in here. This will make your life super easy. And if you know how to follow this chart, and it tells you how many degrees of freedom, how many constraints are in each shape, and which one's linked to what. Okay? So um, this makes your life super, super easy knowing this chart. Okay? Okay. So... <laughs> 
Okay, so, so let's do some examples of the fact design approach. All right. Okay, so, so but, but first, before we do that, let's look at, um, let's, let's look at the constraint space of just a single red rotation line, okay? So say uh, you wanted to get a single rotation. <laughs> okay, so um, to get just a single rotation, what you do is you need to find uh, every single blue line uh, that intersects that red line somewhere at least once. I can't even do this. 